What's up guys? Welcome back to The Educated Barfly. My name is Leandro Riva, and today we're going to be making a bijou. So the bijou, which actually means jewel in French, was thought to be named that because it is named after the colors of the different liquors that are correspond with different jewels. I guess gin being a diamond, an emerald being uh, the green chartreuse, and maybe a ruby for the Kochi uh, sweet vermouth. Um, it was created by uh, Harry Johnston uh, sometime in the early 1900s, and it was included in Johnson's 1900s tome, The Bartender's Manual, or Harry Johnson's Bartender's Manual. That's what I got for you. Let's make the cocktail and get into it and see what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is just two dashes. Well, two Japanese bitters dashes, which if you're doing it from a thing, we're doing uh, one dash from a dasher. But this is actually a mixture of, uh, re uh, of sorry, Regans and Fees. So we call it Fegans. Um, and if you're doing it from a Japanese bitter dasher, it'll be two dashes to equate that dash. Then we're going to do one ounce of gin. One ounce of sweet vermouth. Three quarters of an ounce of green chartreuse. And that is it. We're gonna grab our spoon. We're gonna do a little crack of the ice. You want to crack the beginning. And people say, oh, well, when you put the little shards in there, doesn't it lead to over dilution? And you know what? Honestly, it does not lead to over dilution. And the reason why it doesn't lead to over dilution is because these big rocks, when they come straight out of the freezer like they just did, are actually hard. It's actually difficult to dilute. So you want those little pieces in there to help the dilution. Because once the cocktail gets down to temperature, the dilution will stop until you pour it. So. You want to make sure. So, you know, a lot of people will see me stir for a long time and think that I'm over diluting the cocktail, but I'm really not. It, you know, to when these, when you're using big rocks of ice like this, it takes a while to dilute the cocktail down and chill it down to its proper level. You don't want to under dilute it, it'd be too stiff. You need to hit that balance. And even though I did a mechanics of stirring episode, which you should go watch if you haven't seen it already, um, I continue to teach you guys how to stir. I want you guys to have the best possible cocktails at home. There we go, we're almost done, we're good, almost. Getting close guys. That's about right. There we go, let's strain it. Nice wash line there. Evidently, I forgot to close the freezer because I can hear that tiny little beeping sound. And then take a... So here's the thing. History has had it that you, this is either garnished with a cherry or with an olive. And I am think that the powers that be have come out on the right side and saying that is one skewered cherry and just put it in there like that. I got it on a nice little cocktail pick I got from uh, Barfly Mixology Gear. And there you have it, my friends, the bijou. Let's taste it. All right, now the major flavor profile in that is going to be the chartreuse, but it plays so well with the sweet vermouth, and of course you get the botanicals from the gin and a little bit more booze. Um, this is something that I would drink often, but maybe not all the time. I would definitely have it on occasion, that's for sure. It's a great drink. You can see why it's so popular. And it's a very good use of your green chartreuse. So if you have some chartreuse lying around, you don't know what to do with it, the bijou. That's the way you're going to do with it. All right, guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And uh, comment below if you want to get in touch, because I usually am pretty good about responding. Also, swing by our Patreon. we got a couple of levels of uh, different Patreon uh, levels that we do where we make some uh, special videos. And you guys should check that out as well. All right. See you next time.